with her all the time. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Delaware County Commissioner's meeting. It's Monday, November 15th, 2021. The time is 9.04 for bike and please stand for the pledge. Uh, the same day. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Here. Ms. Reagan? Present. Mr. King? Here. Mr. Burke? Here. First, we have appointments uh, to the fair board. Yes, I'd like to nominate Carrie Dye. She's a farm girl, and I think she'd do a nice job for him. And she would be completing Larry Clendenin's term? Correct. Uh, looks like and we, then we also have a few more on here. Uh, is it Lena and Nicola? Julie Eskew? Mark Pitzer? And Jeff Smoot? I just thought those would be done in January, but yeah, we could run them down if you want to. Uh, I'll make. Looks like they're asking for them to be reappointed now. We are, and we try to do that before year end because our Delaware, our um, uh, Fairs and Festivals Convention is always the first weekend in January. So we try to have all of our board members in place so that anyone that wants to go to that, um, and also we have our election of officers in November. So we just try to make sure that we've got everything in place before year end. So we are just asking for them to be reappointed for another three year term and for Carrie to complete that term of Larry Clendenin's. And that could be effective today then. How long is Larry Clendenin's appointment? He's got two more years, so it would be the end of 2023. So, Sherry, you making that a motion? Yes. I'll second it. Have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Donna, would you like to bring up the other that we have on here during the elected officials part? At the end, toward the end. Is that for the fees? Uh, yeah, that'll be for the fees. I can. Okay. All right. Next, we'll move to table business. Uh, we have the Airport Authority Board. We have two that uh, sent information to us requesting to be on the board. Uh, I'll make a motion. We remove both of these airport and the DCC from our table. Okay. Have a second. Have a motion and a second to remove. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Sorry, we're ready for that one. <clears throat> Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. On the airport authority, since we have two, when we do the roll, can you just say the name that you would like to appoint? And then I guess whoever gets the two votes will be appointed to the board. Donna, can you call the roll? Oh, probably please? ought to just for the for the record just nominate those those two that you're gonna vote on. Nora Powell and I can't remember who the other Scott one is. Scott Truex. Scott? Yep. Okay. Somebody wanna make a motion oh, to I'll make a motion we nominate those two. Second. Donna, can you call the roll please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Now, John, we move forward with uh Now you vote on wh which one you which one each one selects. Okay. Donna, can you call the roll, please? For the airport authority. And so what was the first one we just did? You just, they Get just the dominate table. two people for the airport authority. Oh, now we're going to vote and we will say the name of the person. And the one that gets the two votes will be the one appointed to the board. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Henry. Powell. Ms. Reagan. Mr. Truex. Mr. King. Powell. That'll be Nora Powell. That will go on the airport authority board. 
Next, we have Delaware County Community Corrections Board. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Joyce Mitchell. She would be uh, rep uh, filling in her uh, late husband, Royce, Royce, who served on that. And she's willing to serve. I will second that yeah. nomination. I have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we'll move to approval of minutes, uh, November 1st, 2021 commissioner's meeting and November 4th, 2021 executive session. So move. Second. That motion is second for approval. Donna, can you call the roll, please? This is for both, right? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we have under presentation, charter communications. Uh, Ms. James is ill today, will not be able to make it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can reschedule for the next meeting, and uh, hopefully she'll be here. Uh, Brad, can you let us know when she's able to? Yes, sir. And we I can will. reschedule it? Yeah, she, she just notified me earlier today that she's ill this morning and that she'll reschedule for another day. All right, thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. Next, we'll move the contracts or agreements for approval. First, we have Purdue Extension Contractual Service Agreement. Hello, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as every year prior, we have our contractual services agreement between the county and uh, Purdue University. Um, I believe you already have a copy of that. Jenny got you one. Yes. Um, so I will just need a signature on that, and then we'll be good to go. Right. I can pick that up afterwards, too. Thank you. In motion and second for the agreement. John, you've looked at this. I think it's just the yes, it's the standard same one, one I've yeah. seen every year. I'll make a motion. We approve the uh, agreement with Purdue Extension. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Ms. King. Yes. Next, we'll go to the Indiana State 911 board, board letter. Mr. Ritter. Hey, good morning. Uh, before you, you have a letter that Jenny had prepared on your letterhead on September 23rd of this year. There was a 911 service um, interruption that um, was on the um, AT&T network with some equipment um, that impacted central Indiana, most of the donut counties around Marion County, I think about 15 PSAPs. Uh, all of the directors uh, had concern with the service that was provided by uh, AT&T at the Resolution Center uh, that resulted in um, misroute of 911 calls. So. Uh, several counties uh, joined together has drafted that letter uh, for an official um, notice to the 911 board um, asking that under their master contract with AT&T and the service level agreements with the Resolution Center uh, that they intervene and do something to correct that problem. So I'm just asking for uh, Delaware County Commissioners to approve that letter and sign it and I'll deliver it to the State Board. I make a motion we approve. Second. A motion a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we have the addendum to interlocal agreement for 911 Center. John? This is an addendum to the current 911 agreement that's been discussed at the 911 board uh, to extend the uh, agreement, which expired at the end of this year, for one more year with the city at the current terms and conditions and the mayor's indicated that he's in, in approval. Okay. I make a motion we approve. Second. I have a motion a second. Donna, can you call the roll please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next we have amended order establishing precincts. Yes. Uh, there was I was working with Rick Spangler. There's one precinct that we needed to fix in addition to the ones that were already done, 4 and 49 because of annexations. The um, State Election Board has already approved this uh, change. I've added the map to the information you have. What will happen is once you approve this, the state has already approved it, so Rick will then publish it and notify the voters in all those precincts that were affected, which is only maybe 100, 150 at, at the most. Okay. And it was a very small change. Yes, it was a very small change. 
just because of annexations and some other. I move we adopt. Second. A motion is second. Donna, can you call roll, please? Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we have uh, ordinance number 2021-031 for first reading, ordinance creating a new fund for grant-funded purchase of drug incinerator. Morning, Commissioners. Jeff Stanley with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we want, we actually we applied for a grant and we won the grant uh, as about $4,400. The Sheriff's Department is going to add an additional 600 to purchase this uh, portable incinerator so we can get rid of expired drugs and drugs that the community turn in. We like to uh, I suspend the rules. Yeah, we like to suspend the rules for a second reading I, as well. How's that? Uh, how's that fire? It's electric gas. I believe off propane. Propane. Yeah. Is this one that you can take out in the community and do, or is it? A we permit? can. It'll probably stay on site at the justice center, and we can just move outdoors when when we use it. Yeah, and I guess um, you work with the pharmacies or. Well, we have a drop box at the front of the Justice Center where the community can drop off expired drugs, and so we need a place to get rid of those. Is that the only one we have out in the public? I believe so. because oh, they used to kind of have them at the fairgrounds. I forget the name of that. Though. We do do a, uh, a drive annually, and I think we have one coming up actually to where we, we take a trailer to the fairgrounds and other locations where the community can drop expired stuff off. Okay, thanks. I'll make a motion we introduce ordinance number 2021-031. Second. I have a motion for introduction. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I make a motion we suspend the rules. Second. I have a motion of suspension of the rules. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. I'll make a motion we adopt ordinance number 2021-031. Second. I have a motion and a second for adoption. Can you call the roll, Donna? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Right. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Sure. Next, for first reading, we have ordinance number 2021-032, an ordinance amending Title I, Chapter I, Section 1, 2, and 3, Subsection N, and ordinance 2021-009 and 2021-021 concerning weapons and other matters in or on county-owned property. Yes, this is an ordinance that came as a result of the um, questions that the courts had concerning 2021 and uh, 9 and, and 21. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've blended those two to amend the current county code. I would recommend that this be introduced so that everybody gets a chance to take a look at it and we can make changes to it for the next meeting. Okay. I'll make a motion we introduce 2021-032. Second. I have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we'll move the resolutions for approval. Resolution number 2021-047, resolution assigning tax sale certificates to the City of Muncie. Yes, the City of Muncie has identified two tax sale certificates, 723 South Council. Uh, that they wish to have for uh, assigned to them so that they can take care of and clean up the title, put it in their name. I move we adopt resolution 2021-047. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second for adoption. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we have... Resolution number 2021-048, resolution identifying properties to be offered for sale to abutting landowners. This is a resolution that's um, for an abutting landowner on a piece of property for the county to transfer pursuant to the statute um, to the adjoining landowner. And the descriptions are all attached to the resolution. How do we um, go about finding what a value is John on those this particular one is identified as no value because of where it's located if you look at it it's it's just a small little sliver of property three one hundredths of an acre yeah there's quite a few of them and then we appreciate and I suppose a lot of these people have been taking care of this property years yes 
I make a motion we approve resolution 2021-048. Second. I have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Next. President, yes. there, there's one other resolution that I added that had Jenny as the yeah. last minute. This one is for Denise. It's resolution 2021-49. This is a resolution of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners concerning canceling the lease with Mundell Building Corporation. I've been working with the um, city of Muncie to clean up the title for the old Justice Center building. Uh, and Mr. Hughes identified this as a issue for the title company. I spoke with the title company and the language in this is to reference all of the various leases and amendments and then show that when this property was transferred in 2014, the lease was canceled. It wasn't done in 2014. So this would take care of that and clean up the title for the uh, city. Okay. I make a motion we approve resolution 2021-049. Second. A motion is second. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Next, we'll move to department heads and elected official. John, you want to discuss the APAX insurance agreement? Yes. We have um, two agreements. Um, I've been working with Pam McCammon on the renewal of the health insurance for 2022. Uh, we had some favorable things. We had some not so favorable things. But overall, the increase is not as large as, as other communities have expected. I think it's around 10%. Yeah, our increase will be 10%. Right. Um, one thing that the, uh, they recommended is that we make some changes and they got some competitive quotes on certain aspects of the health insurance. One of them is the change providers on the cancer policy, I think it was, yes. or transplant, uh, transplant tran policy. On that, yeah, transplant organ, organ transplant. policy, which dropped the, helped keep the rate down 10% or a little less than right. 10, actually 10% because it was going to go up 15 or 16%. Mm -hmm. So they kept that down. Uh, and so I recommend, and we met with the insurance committee, everybody is in agreement with this. We recommend that we approve the insurance changes for 2022. Mm -hmm. And there's also another component, which is changing prescription plan. We go to a true RX, which has been uh, saving communities money in, the, in other areas where they've had this. And so this would be a, a different prescription provider, which prescription expense were about $2 million of the county's health insurance costs. And so this would help save some money there as well. Okay. Right? Yes, Pam? that's that's correct. Um, and I do want to add, uh, on the plan this year, we've worked on this since June and trying to keep the prices down. And this, if we, if the employee's uh, contribution did not go up this year, it would have been our sixth year staying the same. And it was just, we had to do, we had to raise it 10% because of the cost of, and going with TrueRx did save us a lot of money on our drug plan. But what we're going to be doing this year, uh, once a member satisfies $4,000 deductible, and the out-of-pocket from four to five will be picked oh, up the by the county. And then at five, when they reach their $5,000, everything's 100%. We don't have a lot of members that even reach their deductible. So this is where we felt that raising the plan, even though people's not going to like that, people's not going to like raising the plan, but we had to do that. We had to do that. But we are helping them with their out-of-pocket expense. So th th this is a great plan. These people are great people to work with. And we did go out and get other bids and once again they can they can beat anyone and this insurance does work I mean it's a proven fact it does work but um, I want to thank John for helping me with this toward the end and Ginger my assistant I told her I said you got to sit in these insurance meetings because it'll be two hours you'll never get back <laughs> and she's been good to sit in so I I'm excited about this I'm really excited what's what's the average employee what what's it go up on the average employee? Uh, ten percent so if it's right now it's fifty seven dollars for an individual out of each pay so to go up five dollars and uh, I should have brought that and no, I didn't um, but it's not going to be that Okay. Yeah, I think for, for a family plan, it's only it's around $200 a year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And to think that we've stayed the same 
for five years. Yeah. This is a good thing. Yeah, something you just have, we have to do. Yes, we do. We don't have Delamed's or SaberX anymore. We do have Delamed's, oh, sure. but SaberX, we haven't had, uh, no, we'll be going with a new plan. And this new plan, it, it, it's going to be really, it specializes in specialty drugs. So some of the drugs that you see on TV that we couldn't get before, and that's what they call specialty drugs, uh, we're going to be able to get them at a lower cost. So. But we do um, have Delamed still. We still have Delamed's, yeah. Now, I'm not going to promise anything that Delamed's, if they don't start working with us in the next couple of years, that everything will go to this. Yeah. But, but right now, we still have Delamed's. When's this effective? A 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And we also are, um, uh, because, because we have... Um, well, we're going to change our portal to where people, we're going to start having department head meetings and meet with each person individual to where they can access their own portal. They can put themselves on. We're going to go try to go paperless in our office. And they can put them on insurance through the portal, life insurance, change beneficiaries, do everything. And it's a free system for us. And it's from, uh, the cost is with tech credits and that's from One American Aflac. So by having them and us having the text we'd have, it's free to us. So we're going to try to move into 2022. And how often can they go in and change? They can go in anytime they want and look at that and change their beneficiaries. The biggest thing I've always had concern is the beneficiaries. You know, people come in and then they forget to change their beneficiaries when they have a life-changing event. So this will make that but we're all going to have one-on-one -on -one meetings. And I really would stress that each department head encourage their people to come. We're going to have two out at the Justice Center and one person here. And it's going to be for a week. So we're trying to make, make it due for... And you'll, you'll announce those dates I later? I will, yes. Okay. They'll probably get tired of hearing, seeing my emails, but... Okay. Because I hear that too. <laughs> I'll make a motion we approve the agreements with Apex. Second. I have a motion and a second. Donna, can you call roll, please? Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. There's Thank also you. an agreement with True RX for the prescription that's outside the APEX agreement that you'll have to approve as well. I'll make a motion we approve that agreement as well. Second. I have a motion and a second. What? I don't have that right. Yeah, I gave them to you. It's right there. True okay, RX. It's, it's right, but I thought, what was the other? Apex. First one was Apex. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't have Apex. Yep, we'll get that. Okay. So this one's True RX. And there's two of them for the pharmacy. Right. Okay. And that was Apex. Okay. okay. Donna, can you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. So, Denise, which one do you need? Apex. I'll get that to you after the meeting. Thanks for all your work on this. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks thank you, Commissioner. Glad to have you on board. Now you want to? Yep. Does everybody have their copy of what we were? I have hmm. mine. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have yours? I've got. Yeah. What so did? I need your help for this. Oh yeah, I got it. You got it with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just kind of here as the secretary of the fair board, um, but apparently it's been a while since we've changed any of our fees, and we currently charge $20 a night for camping fees, and we are proposing that we raise that to $30 a night, and if they need to use our dump station there, that we charge them a one-time fee of $10. Now, is the $30 for a camper, tent, everything just flat? I believe so. Is that your understanding, Donna? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. And then we also, are, they have re-evaluated our vendor, vendor rental fees for during the fair, and currently they pay a base rate of $375 for an 11-foot frontage spot. 
then they pay $27.50 for each additional foot plus 25% of those additional fees to cover the electricity charges. So we would like to raise that base rate from $375 to $390, change the additional frontage from $27.50 a foot to $28.50 a foot, and then keep the 25% of those overages of the base rate to cover the electricity charges. So it's a pretty minimal increase. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, change in some of the fair ground fees Melanie spoke about. Second. I have a motion and a second to change the fees and the camping fees and also the vendor rental fees. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have any other department head elected officials that would like to speak at this time? If not, we'll move to payment of claims in the amount of two million one hundred seventeen thousand four hundred six dollars and forty cents. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second for payment of claims. Donna, can you call the roll, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. John, do you have any? Nobody signed up to speak. Do you have anything? Uh, anybody email or? Not that I have. No. Okay. I entertain a motion to recess then. So move. Second. A motion and a second to recess. Donna, can you call the roll? Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Riggin? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. Recess. Thank you. Uh.